I'm Scott Berry with Roland US. I'm here to show you the Jupiter 80. For a great deal on the Jupiter 80, be sure to check out the bundles here at Kraft Music. The Jupiter 80 is a performance synthesizer. Uh, it differs from a workstation basically because there's no sequencer or sampler on board. But don't let that fool you. This is an extremely powerful instrument. The Jupiter 80 is really set up for a great performance. Not only do we have 76 keys to work with, but we also have a lot of controls that are right here on the surface. For example, arpeggiator control, on and off, sliders for volumes. We can shut down sections, we can bring things back up. We have an octave control, category buttons here, color touch screen. Another option for getting through our registrations quickly in a live performance is using the buttons down here below. By selecting exactly where we wanna be, we can jump to that sound quickly. Uh, the other thing is they can be locked out so that they are not accidentally hit during a performance. The Jupiter 80 has been out for a couple years now. There's a lot of resources available online that you can find that can go over so many things. What I'm gonna try and do today is go a little bit deeper. I think you're gonna see real quickly how expressive the Jupiter can be and hopefully we can show that to you today. When the Jupiter 80 boots up, Basically what you come into is setless mode and in setless mode it's just a very easy way to go into what we call registration. Registration is the biggest form, in other words the biggest layer. And up on the Jupiter 80 we can layer up to 10 tones, which are basically tones or individual sounds. You hear me refer to tones a little bit more through the, this video. The Jupiter 80 is basically set up into two different ways to have a performance. One is a registration, which I'll show you here. And this is basically what makes up the entire registration. It's divided into, into four sections of up to 10 layers. The other way that, it, that the Jupiter 80 is divided into is what we refer to as single play. And in single play, we can have up to four sounds or four tones. This is also referred to as a live set. So going back into a registration, what we can see is that we can have two live sets running at the same time, plus a solo section, which is a single tone, a percussion section, or that can also be a single tone. So it doesn't have to be just per percussion. By having those two live sets, wow, a lot of power, a lot of power in this machine. In single part play, basically all of the uh, buttons that are across the front of the machine are category buttons. As you can see, we have a piano up here, there's a piano button. If I hit that piano button again, I can enter into and see all the pianos that are available. And here are the electric pianos, just by touching the button, going through, the guitars for instance, and we also have what we class as an alternative category. So just by hitting this button, I have another setting that I can go to. For example, here's the acoustic piano. And just by touching the alternate button, I have another piano loaded that can be completely different. 
and that is that is off the same button so I don't have to go to another area I can have these things set up so that they can call up the sounds that I want that I've chosen and picked that I would need for any performance In a uh, single play, working with supernatural acoustic side of going into it, we really have some great editing features. By going into just the edit, so I have this up, by touching edit, going into edit one more time, I wind up into this screen. What's beautiful about this screen is that everything that I can edit is particular to that instrument. So in other words, if I brought up a guitar or, or anything like that, it's going to be different because it's going to be according to that instrument versus this. So some of the things that we can adjust are, I'll give you an example, hammer noise. And you can hear how that gets a little bit more aggressive with things. Again, to do that and to go in and actually do that to an actual piano, they'd have to go in and they have to shave the hammers and get it to... So being able to do this quickly on the fly is, is fantastic. But the advantage here is that you can really tailor the piano, just the piano or any of the acoustic sounds to your liking and how you want them to react and sound. So that's, that's just a fantastic feature. All right, now let's look at some of the editing capabilities that we have that are in the uh, acoustic guitar section. So just by hitting the guitar tab, I can go in, hit edit, and do the exact same thing, edit one more time, I come down to this level. So I have things that are available like noise level. So I might want that a little bit more aggressive. It's getting a little bit more. I have things like strum speed. a little bit slower within that. So again, I can tailor that to my performance or what I want. Even if I don't want the strum on is an option. So now you're just getting a straight chord versus a strum. All right, so now let's go check out the organs and what we can do as far as editing. And believe it or not, we've got draw bars. So going down into one of the tone wheel organs, you can see we have all of our draw bars across here. We can edit them on screen and get the sound that we're looking for. Really, really great features of being able to do things like uh, uh, add a little bit of effects to it if we wanted to in this area, uh, the harmonics. Faster decay, slower decay, on and off, percussion. It's just, it's just really nice, and, and believe it or not, I mean, you can see how quick these respond. All right, one of the things I'm gonna go over with you guys is behavior modeling is, is one of the things that's absolutely awesome with the, the, uh, with the Jupiters. I'll show you real quick. This is just an acoustic bass. Simple. Great sound, but this is where it gets really, really cool. By doing things and actually playing like the actual instrument. So if I hit C and D, Chances are a bass player is not going to play like that. Bass player is going to go in and, and hammer into it or, or hammer into it, actually walking bass versus this. So if I play like that, I get one note. But I can still play both. And then if I come off, I get the hammer off. So where this becomes important, not only is it just cool as can be, is that if you're doing a walking bass line, it becomes a more realistic feel and it sounds more like the instrument and the player.
Another example on behavior modeling, and again, acting like the actual instrument, the acoustic instrument. Right here we have a marimba. And with marimbas, as we know, a lot of times what you want to do is play like this. Well, that can be very hard or, or <laughs> extremely difficult to keep up with. So what we've done is that in the joystick, on the end of the joystick, by pushing it forward, we get the roll, which is just is very cool. Now, where it gets really, really cool is when you go to pitch bend. As we all know, so many times when you go to pitch bend and acoustic sound, it just sounds fake, fake as it can get. But check this out. more realistic to what that instrument would do. Now that we've covered a little bit of the single play or the live set, like I said, there you could go up to four tones in a layer in a single play mode. Let's go back into the registration. And the registration, just by touching the key bed here, I can open it up and see what that registration is built of. What's on the solo section, what's in the, the live set upper, what is in the live set lower, or the, lo or the lower live set, upper live set, um, and how it consists. Now what's really cool is over here we have control for volumes of each of those sections in this screen, and I can also shut them down. Now, what's great about this is that we can do a performance and bring parts in without them just triggering. They actually will not trigger until the keys are struck again. I'll give you an example. Let me give you another example of a registration and, and basically playing a performance inside it. Again, I will be using these areas to mute sections and bring parts in. I'll also be using the D beam to swell in the choir. So let's open this up. So we can see what the registration consists of, single and, and how it's all laid out. And then I can use the buttons again to just mute parts and bring parts in. So what I'm gonna do is with the volume, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut my hand over the D beam. By doing this, I can go ahead and trigger some of the choir sounds. Now you can't hear it, but watch.
now let's take a look at the synth engine. So basically, going down into editing, we can get as far down as the oscillator level, or the partial. Each tone is built up of three partials. You can choose to use all three or not, that's up to you. What's nice is that if you look up here into the yellow, this is turning those sections on. So we can have three layers. So one single tone can run three oscillators. And since we can layer 10 tones, we can run 30 oscillators at one time. So our, our basic features, our waveforms, our sawtooth, our square, our pulse, our sign. We even have some PCM that we can go in and choose uh, if we want to use the sample attack of like a bell tone or something like that. If we come over to the filter, there's four low pass filters. These have all been uh, modeled after vintage synthesizers. So you think of the, the four big icons or whatever that were big back in the day, these are the filters that are modeled after it. Our amplitude area, and there is an LFO area that we can go in and modulation, LFO, uh, anything else that we want to do in there. I mean, it's extremely powerful, but for the analog side, even the supernatural synth, this is what I'm familiar with, this is what a lot of us are familiar with, is the knobs and the sliders, and it, it looks. The other option that you can do for editing for synth is what we call Pro Edit. Pro Edit is the exact same information, it's just in a digital form. You're just seeing it as numbers and things. So that's, those are the two different ways that you can go in and edit the synth engines. I also wanna show you our iPad app for the synth editing of the Jupiter 80. Uh, the screen that's on this is absolutely fantastic and great graphics. This makes it a little bit more brilliant and a little bit bigger. You do not have to have an iPad to edit the Jupiter 80. Just another way of doing things. So for instance, I can adjust cutoff here. You can hear that a little bit. Um, I can shut single layers down. Now let me show you how this works. If I back out of here one more, two more exits, I can actually turn other parts on. So as you saw earlier where I was shutting down individual zones, this is actually individual parts of a live set. So it gives me another option of more power and more control over the machine via the iPad. Pretty cool. There's two different ways that you can connect the iPad to the Jupiter 80. One is the optional wireless adapter key. The other is to hardwire through USB to the camera connection kit. On the back panel of the Jupiter 80, you'll find a headphone output, XLR outputs, quarter inch uh, outputs, a sub out that can be assigned, audio in for things like a MP3 player, control pedals. Now you've got three, so you've got a lot of options. MIDI, in, out, and through, USB, and a digital out. Once again, I'm Scott Berry from Roland US. Thanks for checking out the Jupiter 80 with me. Once again, if you got any questions, please feel free to contact Craft Music. Thanks again for watching. Take care.